Hey, welcome to another YouTube interview in my Hope Network series where we're trying to help one person every day. And today is like any other because we're going to be talking about how to turn trials into triumph. And so if you are somebody that's struggling through something or going through something in your life, um, I'm very excited about this interview that we're doing today because we are going to learn how to get through those, um, those situations that aren't ideal. Let's just get into the content. But before I do that, uh, I do want to read a bio of the guests we have here today. So we have Christina Blake, and she is a certified transformational coach and motivational speakers who created a transparent platform that will encourage you through real life stories that will make you laugh and cry. But most of all, bring awareness that we all have a story, just different chapters. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Christina is an author of the book entitled, Don't Look Like What I've Been Through which released its book trailer in July, 2018, and is currently working on her second book entitled, The Woman in the Mirror, A Spiritual Awakening, which is due to release in 2021. She also has managed to create a unique clothing line called Good Orderly Directions, which will launch in the fall. Christina Blake was, featured, was a featured speaker at the Success Women's Conference 2018 with Lisa Nichols and Robin Roberts and the keynote speaker for Child and Family Services. Christina has touched many, many platforms with her presence, educating women on the importance of self-love, which starts from within. I love that so much. I cannot wait to get into this content. Thank you, Christina, so much for being here. Thank you, April. It is such an honor to be on this amazing platform with such an amazing woman. Thank you so much. No, no, thank you. Thank you. So I want to learn, you know, your, your background. Like, how did you become a transformational coach? Please, like, what brought you to your journey today? Yes, I don't think I became a transform, transformational coach intentionally. Hmm. It was something that just happened, you know, um, because of my own journey. And um, my topic is trials over triumph and turning them in to triumph. So for me, transform, transformation is the key to overcoming any obstacles or challenges that you may face within your life. And um, I found that out as I wrote my book. Don't look like what I've been through because I don't. I sit before you, I'm 48 years old and I don't look like what I've been through. And people, I tell people all the time, don't judge a book by its cover until you read the content. Because we all, like my um, bio say, we all have a story to tell. And mine is no different from anyone else's. I grew up in a dysfunctional household. I was born into dysfunction. I watched my dad, who was an alcoholic, be verbal and physically abusive to my mom, my brother, my sister, and myself. And it led to me developing the same trait. I was addicted to dysfunctional relationships. And everyone that I was in a relationship with, whether it was friendships or whether it was intimacy, I was in dysfunction. What If you didn't beat me, if you didn't block my eye, me and my girlfriends used to call each other the B word, like it was just normal. So if you didn't speak my language, something was wrong with you until I found out that that's not normal behavior. And as time went on, other things transpired in my life. I lost my mom when I was 13 to a heinous crime, which I talk about it in my book as well. I later gave birth at the age of 14 to a son who later died at 14, at three, I mean, excuse me, y'all, at six months to fluid on the brain. And then I became 
and not a mom again to six more children starting at the age of 18. And um, through all of that triumph, through, through all of that, those adversities, let me say that, through all of those adversities, I became addicted to drugs and alcohol as well. And drugs and alcohol led me down a very dark path. I was incarcerated in 2005. That's where the transformation started in 2005 when I was giving birth to my last daughter. I was laying there, could not hold her, and her dad had to pick her up. I could not touch my daughter. I could not do anything until I was released from prison, which was only was three months later. And right then and there, it gave me time to really think about where I wanted my life to go. I had a GED and that was it. And I was like, there got to be more to life than just this. And at that moment, I made a conscious decision that I was not gonna use anymore. And, 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 and that's how we have to have one of those aha moments that turns our life around whatever that may be. It wasn't when I lost my children, it was when I had my last one. That was my aha, my aha moment, my last child. And being in that room, handcuffed, that gave life and I wanted to change my life for the better and give other women all over the world an opportunity to see that don't where you come from, it does not have to determine where you're going. And that is exactly what I did. I was able to go to college, obtain a degree in psychology. I have a lot of, and I was like, that's just not enough. I want to go as far as I am allowed to go with each breath that I am given. And after that, I continued to move on. And I started my conversations with Christina podcast. I started my clothing line because I wanted women to feel empowered when they put them on. I wanted them to know that you are loved. You are confident and so my clothing line speaks for itself, good orderly directions. And all of it talks about being a better version of yourself. I've been through, but you got to know within yourself that you are worthy of more. You have to know that. Right. So you would say that your last child, which I, I believe you said was your daughter, um, is she was yes. the catalyst, it's like she was the motivating factor that started this whole transformation for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had never experienced that with any of my children, even though being addicted to drugs and alcohol, I just had never experienced that. That was so unbearable for me. And we never know what is going to be our turning point which have been designed to be transparent and authentic because you can't be nobody but yourself. And that's what I tell people, be who you've been created to be. Don't want to be anyone else based off of what you see because they're right. not telling you the blood, sweat, the tears that's behind it. Right. And so earlier you talked about, um, you know, how you were talking to your girlfriends and your relationships, if they didn't look a certain way, you know, that was just not normal to you. Where do you think in your life or was it still, you know, handcuffed to that bed, which I, I missed the part that you were in prison. I missed that whole part. I don't know if the, if the, the call dropped, but I did not know you were in prison and, and that's where, why you lost your kids. But, um, what, like who or what um, made you realize that this isn't normal? Like were, were, you, were you able to peek into other families? Like tell us about that. 
it was because people ask me all the time, who was your role model? Who did you look up to influence in your life? And there was no one. There was no one that I could even think back to. No one influenced my life. It was the, I think it was the, de no, I know. It was just the determination that I had that God didn't create me just for this. He could not have want to exist anymore. I didn't. And so I made a conscious decision. Everything starts with the decision. And someone told me this so, it's so profoundly that we all have choices, but it's not until we make a decision, just like when we get up in the morning and we're trying to figure out what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, that's a decision. You may have many choices, but guess what? At the end of the day, you got to make a decision of what choice you're going to make. So that's what I started doing is making conscious decisions of how I wanted my life to manifest. And you got to tap into who you really are, not who people think you are or who you may want to mimic. Don't mimic anyone. Be who, be your authentic self because there's a purpose for that authenticness. Yeah, I there's love that. Somebody okay. that needs. Yeah, I love that so that. much. Yes. And, and so, and so you help women or like, do you help women? Do you help anyone, men? Okay. Yes. My target audience is women. Okay. So, okay. Great. Awesome. So, um, let's get into the content. So there, there are women out there that are going to watch this video and what initial steps can they begin to take? And I love what you said about making a decision. Like that was, that was, that was great. Like we have so many choices, but that doesn't matter. We all have to decide to act. So yeah. Um, but what steps do one need to take to start getting um, their trials into trial? Because what I want to do is anybody who may need additional help, I want them to reach out to you. Um, because I, man, your story, like, <laughs> Your story and for you to overcome that, like, yes, yes. But yeah. what are those initial steps that someone may be able, may need to take? Yes. So for me, the defining moment is you got to first love yourself. First love, um, self-love is key. You got to first start within knowing who you are, and for me, knowing whose I am. So self-love is the most important thing that we have to discover. Because when you love yourself, that gives you the opportunity to love others and to know what you want and don't want in your life. When I began to love myself, I was able to make decisions of who I wanted in my life and what I didn't want. So self-love is key. That's first. And then, so how did you begin to, okay, so if that was the first step, then you didn't love yourself prior. Like what was that initial step to where uh, you say, you know what, I need to start loving myself. And, and, and what did that look like? Well, for me, I began to be around people. I began to, to be around people that I wanted. I wanted what they had. I wanted to know more. And it started with going to meetings because first I had to address my addiction. I had to first address the issue. And my motto is words plus action equals change. That is my motto. First, you got to identify. Identify what that issue is. And then you put some action behind it. See, it's just like making a choice.
choice than making a decision. So worthless action equals change. So I made a choice getting that, no, nah, this ain't it. I don't just, this not me. I've got to find people that can help me. In AA meetings. I started there. And going there on a consistent basis, it started helping me to love me because I was hearing stories that was worse than mine and some that wasn't. But guess what? They was authentic and they were transparent. So being around people that was just like me, but had made decisions to do better, they gave me the motivation and the determination to keep pushing forward to now loving who I am. So being consistent and knowing who you are and that you have a divine purpose on this earth. So that's why I say you got to start with self first, loving who you are, because it starts and it ends with us, with you, with me. That's it. Self-love is the key to everything. We can get everything in this world that we want monetarily, but will that still make us happy if we don't know who we are and we're not in love with the person that we're looking at in the mirror? See, I got to be able to look in that mirror and love what I see looking back at me. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's so good. I love that you said that. And then what's the next step? And then once you begin to love yourself, see, loving yourself is an inner thing. But guess what? It still has to connect to the mindset. Mm. Your mindset in, the, in loving yourself is the key to pursuing what is your divine purpose on this earth. See, it's not the other way around. And some people get it misconstrued. If I don't love myself, it doesn't love myself. It doesn't matter what the mind say. It doesn't matter. See, because the mind can tell you can change your mindset. It still doesn't mean that you love yourself. I work with people who mindset has changed, but guess what? They still need affirmations. They need to still be told that I am beautiful. I am confident. I am successful. But guess what? You say that your mindset has changed. See, it got to go hand in hand. See, when you love yourself, then mindset changes automatically because now you're feeding yourself. Oh, I love me. I love who I am. I am worthy. I am confident. I am powerful. I am successful. I am confident. So now, guess what? Whoop, what you start to say, you begin to believe. What you begin to, what you feel on the inside, you begin to believe it. So guess what? The heart is beginning to change the mind and it's beginning to shift the way you see things, the way you see things. And that's how your circle begin to change. That's how the people around you begin to change. That's how you begin to say, uh -uh. oh no. Uh-uh, calling me out my name. Uh-uh, that's not normal. Because I don't call me that. That's not what I am. Uh-uh, you, you hit me. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. I love me too much to allow you to punch me in my face today. So that's when the mindset begins to change. Once you begin to love who you are, then your mindset begins to change. It's not the other way around. Because this can change and this still stays the same. You still going to be okay. Because you're going to think that it's all right to block my eye. You're going to still feel like it's okay to call me that. But no. Not when you love yourself. When you begin to love you, this automatically begins to change. Automatically. You know, and then, and then three. Number three. I needed some more help with my mindset i needed some guidance you know because sometimes we can be left to our own devices and we still run on self-will so guess what this is not an i thing this is a we see we can't walk this journey called life by ourselves none of us 
I don't care how successful you are or how, un, you know, where, where you may be in your life. This thing called life and this journey is never, it was never designed to be done alone. If that's the case, it wouldn't be a population. It wouldn't be more than one person existing. If God would have created, he would have just left it with Adam, but he knew that he needed someone else to help him to do what needed to be done. So I had to get a coach. See, the coach need a coach. And I tell people that all the time. A coach needs a coach. And if you don't have a coach, then you're running on self-will and it becomes I, I, I am doing this for you. Not I am, we are doing this together. It's I am helping, I am getting you to your next level. No, baby, I am only here to guide you because everything you need is already within. And I needed someone to help to guide me through my process. Yeah, I can see that because, you know, when you're trying to do things your, your, yourself, um, not saying that you can't, but it's it's so much more uh, empowering when someone, and I believe you said this before when we were uh, talking about uh, the mindset, how you start changing the people that are around you. So mm -hmm. even getting that coach is a change in the people that are around you and you want to be where he or she is yes. and, and, and them taking you by the hand and pulling you up there. Um, that's, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what you do now. That's it. That is it. <laughs> that's it, April. You know, and it's, you know, we all, how we met, it was a divine intervention. You know, I believe all of us were supposed to been in, you know, be on boot, be on TV boot camp, and it was the 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 right amount of people. And guess what? After it was over, we kept those connections because guess what? Our mindsets were the same. They were the same, but guess what? We all are individualized, and so we all have our own uniqueness and individualness. That guess what? But we all bring something to each other's lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but some people, they can't necessarily leave their environment or those negative connections that they have with people are so hard. Like, how does one break free of that so they can, I, I mean, we got to give up our parents, our siblings, our best friends. If, and if so, like, Yes. How, how <laughs> difficult is that? <laughs> Let me say this, April, and, and I'm, very, I'm being authentic. Anything that jeopardizes my, 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 my peace, I disconnect myself too because I've worked too hard to gain the peace that I have today. And so I set boundaries. I set boundaries and I don't allow anyone to step over them. And it doesn't matter who it is. I have, my oldest daughter will be 30 on the 4th of February. And we, I have a great relationship with all of my children now. And, and if you want to know more, read the book. But we have a great relationship. But I set boundaries because guess what? They are grown women. They are women. And guess what? You're not my child. You're my kids, but you're not a child. You're an adult. You're a woman. You make your decisions. You go to work. You have your own children. So I have to put boundaries in place. Because at one time, I didn't know. I didn't know how to say no because of guilt and because of shame. Of what, what I robbed them of as children but guess what i can only apologize because when we don't know we don't know but we are responsible for what we do know but you got to make decisions it goes back to decisions if you want what if you want what you've already always got 
stay the same. But if you want something different, that, that means you need to change. You got to learn how to be un you got to learn how to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Because that's where growth starts. You can't be complacent and comfortable and think change can come from that. It doesn't. Change comes when you're uncomfortable because it allows you to push harder. See, when people told me that I couldn't, I showed them that I could because you don't determine what I can and cannot do. No. Yeah, and and, and two things I heard you say, um, uh, or actually you didn't necessarily say them, but I got was you need boundaries and then forgiving yourself. Like I... Cause that is so true. We think about what we weren't able to provide for our children and then we're overcompensating and, and that's a mess in itself. Um, yeah. What they learn and then just learning to forgive yourself to say, Hey, you know what? <laughs> that's I, need, it. I need to put up these boundaries. <laughs> so I love that. Yeah. Or you going to be burnt out. Yeah, exactly. So if, if anyone needs to connect with you because they need more help, they need more support, the coach needs a coach. <laughs> yeah. How do we get in contact with you? Yes, I'm on so on Instagram as I am Christina Blake. I am on Facebook as Christina Blake. And my business number is 240-685-7280. My email and my email address is conversations with Christina 47 at gmail.com. And then, so it's 2021. What are you most excited about? Everything. Doors, I mean, oh, doors are opening. I have so many things on the horizon. I, I'm just so excited about what 2021 is bringing i am excited and i and this season god spoke and told me that silence is the key and just let them see the manifestations mm. just let them see them as they unfold and that's what i'm doing i'm not talking i'm just walking you know and i'm i'm just walking in action that's it mm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love that. Oh, so much, so much. Okay. I thank you. So before we end this interview, is there, is there any last words you want to leave our audience with? Yes. There is hope. There mm -hmm. is. You do that. not have to be bound by what other people have said about you. Most of the time, we've given our power over to the wrong people. We, we, we're believing what another individual who got as much trauma as I do, we're believing their beliefs. So we got to first change our belief system. And that starts with self-love. I got on a shirt. Self-love. Trust process it does not happen overnight but if you stay consistent and you're determined that you want more you in the and don't think that this have to be this journey called life have to be walked alone call me call me if you I, I don't worry about the finances, because I'm going to help whomever I can. Those that can afford me, they do. Those that can't, I still help. See, because I know if I plant the seeds, I'm going to reap the harvest. And it's not all about money, because God said, if as long as I chase him, the money going to chase me. But I'm here to help people to make decisions that's going to change the trajectory of their life. The same way it did mine. Oh, 
Oh, I love that. I love. Thank you so much, Christina. You have a wonderful story. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how how do we get a hold of your book? Because I feel like um, yes. learning your journey is going to be it's going to help empower others as well. So how yes. do we, how do we get that? I am on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Google Play, and iTunes. But listen, I was married at the time that I wrote my book. So it's under Christina Jackson. Okay. Christina Jackson. But now I am back to Christina Blake. Yes. Okay. But my book, when I wrote it, I was married. So it's Christina Jackson. And the title again. Don't look like what I've been through. Mm, I love that. Thank you so much, Christina, for being here. This has been a, a fabulous interview. Thank you, April, so much.